Hello, everybody. I'm Jerry Willis. In less than a week, President Obama will be sworn in for a second term, but it's the last days of his first term that are raising alarm. From demanding Republicans immediately raise the debt ceiling and worry about that pesky out-of-control spending later, to considering as many as 19 different gun control measures, measures he could enforce without congressional approval as he gears up to unveil his comprehensive plan tomorrow. Our president seems to think of himself, well, a little like a king instead of our elected official. Who's working for who? Joining me now, Brad Blakeman, former advisor to President George W. Bush, and Dan Mitchell, a senior fellow at the Cato Institute. Dan, I'll, I'll start with you. You know, oh, what a difference seven years make. Here's the president back in 2006 on the idea of raising the debt limit. He said this, the fact that we are here today to debate raising America's debt limit is a sign of leadership failure. It's a sign that the U.S. government can't pay its own bills. I, therefore, intend to oppose the effort to increase America's debt limit. And here he is begging for the debt limit to be raised now that he's president. What do you make of that? I think that the president was right several years ago when he said it's a sign of out of control spending and fiscal irresponsibility. But all of a sudden, now that he's the one doing the spending, he seems to think it's just a wonderful, peachy, keen idea. Fine and dandy. It's a responsible thing to do. Don't forget that, Dan. Brad, do you? Uh, you know, I went back and looked at the last time, uh, you know, the government was not paying its bills. 26 days back in fiscal year 1996, Clinton was president. And let me tell you, the only really bad thing that happened is that we furloughed a lot of what is called non-essential workers from Washington. What is the ultimate impact if Republicans don't agree to go along with the president and raise the debt ceiling? The ultimate impact is the president will have to make some tough choices. But this is a guy who says, do as I say, not as I've done. And you correctly point out he voted against um, the raising the debt ceiling when he's a U.S. senator. Suddenly the tables are turned when he's responsible for our debt. And if the president is smart, he'd be a little conciliatory uh, to Republicans instead of uh, unduly um, no, there's challenging no them there's no conciliatory on the, heat, on the eve of his here. inauguration. In fact, None. far from it. You know, the president says the responsible thing to do, uh, making out like uh, the, the Republicans don't want to do anything responsible or they're not concerned about the nation's debt. What would be the consequences of letting that debt ceiling just not paying any attention to it? Would it be hazardous? Is the president right? Is this going to be something bad for the country? Not necessarily. No, the president, let's let's oh. let uh, Dan answer here, Brad. Sure. If we wind up hitting the debt ceiling and there's no increase, what happens is overnight the government has to go to a balanced budget. Now, considering we have deficits of a trillion dollars plus, that's not an easy task, even for those of us at the Cato Institute who want a dramatically smaller federal government. It does not mean default. The federal government is collecting 10 times as much revenue as needed to pay well, interest on the debt. And to that point, Brad, to you, Senator Toomey introducing legislation that would force the Treasury to prioritize spending and deciding what bills to pay. And let's face it, the Treasury is getting money in every single day. I mean, there's tax dollars don't just come in on April 15th. They come in all the time. That's right. And the president will be forced to do what you and I and every other American uh, have to do every day, and that is prioritize our expenses. And if we, we would not default, we would prioritize that which must be paid first, and then we would have to make tough choices as to what is necessary and proper for our, for our government to be spending. That's what we should be doing every day. And quite frankly, that is why this president has failed to lead on a budget, because he just doesn't believe it. He believes there's no end to spending. And at the end well, of his term, it'll be somebody else's problem. At the end of his term, it will be somebody else's problem. But, but here's one piece of advice I would give to Republicans. There are two big fights coming up. The continuing resolution, the, the rest CR. of the, uh, the CR, which is the rest of the fiscal year 2013 spending, and there's the debt limit. On the debt limit, we've already seen Obama's going to demagogue that. He's going to send Bernanke out to rattle financial markets. He's going to really bully Republicans, and that's going to be a very tough fight to win. On the other hand, if they pick a fight on spending on the continuing resolution, that's where we saw in 1990. 1996, Republicans achieved a huge victory by fighting on that annual spending bill. I think that's probably the better, stronger ground for fiscal conservatives and people who want smaller government. That's where they should stake out the fight. All right. Uh I have to move on to the tone of yesterday's press conference with the president. And Brad, I want you to listen to what the president had to send, say at the tail end of that conference. Shocked me. I want to know what you think. This truism about me not socializing enough and patting folks on the back and all that stuff. Uh, 
you know, most people who know me uh, know I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty friendly guy. Uh, and I like a good party. Pretty friendly maybe with friends, but boy, yeah. I tell you, that whole press conference, that didn't seem very warm and friendly to me. What did you think? I think he was aloof, he was condescending, and, and he was lecturing, which he loves to do. But certainly on the eve of his inauguration, he shouldn't have had a press conference. He should have led his inaugural address lofty and, 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 uh, and high-spirited, guide his rhetoric for the next two weeks. And then, of course, we have the State of the Union, where he can be a little more, bit more biting. But to, to be antagonistic on the eve of his inaugural makes no sense. Well, and especially when you're asking for people to, to compromise with you, to work with you, to, to accomplish something. I was kind of shocked by that. Dan, to you, though, uh, changing up topics here just a little bit, uh, we're going to get some measures uh, introduced tomorrow on gun control. Apparently, uh, the vice president is putting forward as many as 19 possible executive orders. Is the president overstepping his bounds here? What's the difference between America and some country that's in deep trouble like Argentina, we're supposed to have the rule of law. And we have a system set up by our founding fathers, a democratic system with a Congress and a White House. And for the president to unilateral, unilaterally say he can change government policy, that's very reminiscent of one of these banana republics. And it's not just a question of its bad policy, it's also what it's doing to our, to our very system of government. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I, Brad, to you, just quickly, we don't have a lot of time. Last word here, the president said he's going to surround himself with children at this news conference. What do you make of that? I think using children as shills to do something that oversteps your power is, is reminiscent of what he's done on, on health care, what he's done in the EPA. And his strategy is, if you don't like it, sue me. And we have. We have sued him on health care, on immigration, on EPA. It's just another one of his strategies to, to uh, use his power in a way he knows that he shouldn't be. It's a great uh, photo op, though, and I think that's what they're looking at. Brad and Dan, thanks for coming on tonight. Great having you Thank here. You. Appreciate uh, your help. And, uh, Dan, great to have you on set. Nice, nice change of pace.